Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Roads Yet Traveled. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> They're uh, gesturing at me. But this is my life's work. I must go, you understand. Of course, sir. Merrick and I can handle this. Wait. What do you mean, American? Thank you. I expect a full report when you're done. Of course, sir. Big Saint says with a smile and a nod as the chief leaves, affording me one last look. Fascinating, isn't it? I can't see the door as he leaves, but I can hear it. There's a moment of silence between the three of us as if all the life in the room has just left. Fortunately for all of us, the one named Americans are discomfort. He's not gonna read that report, you know. Oh, he had yo, he reads my reports. Just not yours. Punctuated with a wink. Huh. Whatever. Guess these two are acquainted? I still have no idea who they are who they really are. Besides a lot of riffics in their names. Well, one of their names anyhow. And the large saint the large saint approaches the wall. Well, one of us has to get some work done around here. Mind letting me in? Aren't you worried about getting contaminated? I spent like four marks getting tested by the emergency team. Saint just turns to him and raises an eyebrow. What are you? Oh. Damn it, right, I forget sometimes. That's the point, you know. Yeah, well, it works. Anyways, you know where we, you know where to stand. Try not to let it out. <laughs> While the Saint waits, Merrick pulls up a screen on his bracelet and points and part of the wall opens up. It just slid away! Once the wonder of the sliding wall phase, I realize I'm about to make close contact with another one of these massive canines. My muscles tense up by going to fight or flight mode. The expression of the sight changes. Only very slightly. There's no way he noticed that, right? I barely flinched, but still, no, he's a he's a canine, he can notice it. I guess I gotta be careful. He steps aside he steps inside and the door closes behind him. Then he proceeds to sit down on the nearby bench and mess around with his bag. <sighs> I decide to keep my distance, so I sit on my bed and watch. Only slightly hiding behind a pillow this time. He's very calm for someone who is sitting in a room with an alien. Wait. I guess I'm also sitting in a room with an alien, although I'm decidedly less calm. Still calmer than when I woke up, though. I guess it can't be helped. This new dog might be huge, but he's very disarming. A gentle giant, I hope. While well, he's pulling out some... Well, while well, he's pulling out some by the looks of it, medical equipment and other unknown tools, Merrick decides to get up from his bench and saunters over to the wall. You know, Doc, that thing is pretty wily. I'd be careful if I were you. Oh, I'm in- oh, I'm in so much danger. I need the big and strong security chief to come and save me. Yeah, 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 ooh, excuse me, yeah, 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 but I'm serious. The thing took up a wrench and tried to hit me. I know, I read your report, Director. I read your report. Director Tyrans, too. Fascinating, isn't it? Eh, more annoying. I'm already under pressure, as is. This really isn't helping. Ah, sorry, y'all, I just woke up. You're fine, Merrick. You've been through worse than this. Mmm, yeah, yeah, whatever. Why the hell are you in there anyways? I doubt, it's, I doubt it's just gonna sit all nicely for you. Why not just knock it out and run all your little tests then? Knock it out? I'd rather not be knocked out again or at all, please. Merrick, you can't be serious. I'm already mad enough at the emergency team for suggesting the use of anesthetics on them. Well, let's not make it any worse, right? Hm, fine. Just watch out, okay? I'll be right, I'll be right here if you need me. The saint just grunts in acknowledgement. He takes his time double-checking every little tool he pulled out of his bag before turning to me. Our eyes meet and he smiles, and proceeds to pat the seat next to him. He can't be serious, Merrick picks up on this too. Doc, he ain't a normal patient. I don't think he's just gonna come to you. Well, I can't go to them without scaring them, but I need these tests done. We didn't get great readings while they were asleep. It might not understand us, but it's clearly sentient, just scared. They will come to me. Just give them time. Merrick doesn't look convinced. One second, y'all. Coffee time. Ah. Uh, there we go. I'm not sure I'm convinced either. After being chased down in corridors and slashed by claws, it's a bit hard for me to just approach one of these things. But now they see I'm sentient. I assume surely that won't happen again. Right? Ugh, this sucks! My mind is racing every which way. After about a minute of panicking and second-guessing myself, I stand up and slowly head over to the bench, against my better judgment. 
eyeing up both of the big dogs on the way, making sure they don't pounce on me like last time. Merrick seems surprised I moved at all, but Doc just has the same smiling exterior. I really hope I don't make a, mis didn't make a mistake here. Not that I have much of a choice in this situation. It's either, what, go over to him or make a pillow for it and hide forever? Tempting, but I don't think I have enough pillows. I sit down a few feet away from him, almost falling off the edge of the bench, and slowly turn my gaze towards him. He's even bigger up close. He must be almost eight feet tall. How's this going to work? Like getting a physical from another species that doesn't even understand me or, w or know what I am. Doc slowly offers his hand a paw? Uh, for me, resting palm side up. My gaze rapidly shifts between his massive paw and his face. Is he offering it to me or does he want my hand in return? Ugh, poor thing's terrified. But the chief was right. It'll be a miracle if we can get his trust. Hey, don't blame me. I was just doing my job. But don't remind me. After taking a few deep breaths to still my nerves, I decided to just get this over with. I've always hated waiting at the doctor's office anyways. I slowly reach up and put my hand inside his paw. Unfortunately for me, he was still busy bickering with Merrick and I ended up surprising him as he jumps back a bit, causing me to flinch backwards as well. I immediately pull my arms to a defensive position. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Crack appears in his ever-present smile as he seems genuinely worried, putting his paw back out slowly, much lower this time. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, please don't tell me I've ruined one, my one chance! My palms are sweaty as I need my bald fists, staring down this massive beast's paw. Believing that they are just in fact here to help me is, an, is substantially harder than I'd like. After convincing myself that I'm not crazy and this is somehow the best course of action, I slow, I oh so slowly return my paw to his hand. I can't help but gently squeeze one of his fingers. It's warm and unbelievably soft. They really are just like big dogs. If there was any doubt left in my mind about these things, it's gone now. They are real. He lets out a sigh of relief, as if he'd been holding back, holding it back since they walked in here. See, Merrick? Once you should try being nice sometimes before just tackling everything you see. Hey, first off, I'm great at tackling things. Top of my class. And next time I find an intruder on the station, I'll remember to be nice first. <clears throat> I'm sure they'll appreciate that. Did he just... make a joke? I can't help but scoff. I'm surprised he has a sense of humor. Guess I don't really know the guy very well. Besides his tackling prowess, which I can... Besides his tackling prowess, which I can unfortunately attest to. Noticing that Doc has an inquisitive look on his face, I realize I responded to another comment I had no right understanding. Did he really pick up on that, though? He does seem smart. But still, that's a stretch. He eyes me up before he eyes me up a bit before reaching over to his other arm and pulling out some bracelet-looking thing. Oh, probably to check my blood pressure. Wait, what what good is that going to do? He has no idea what my blood pressure is supposed to be. Maybe to get a baseline? I, may, I hope he doesn't expect me to tell him what a normal blood pressure should be. He pulls his paw back and pantomimes putting the device putting the device on his wrist. Seems eerily similar to how I'd go at a normal checkup, but I won't complain. I'm going to put this on you and make sure you're healthy, alright? It'll squeeze, okay? Doc, what are you doing? <clears throat> Even if you can't understand us, it's important to explain the procedure. I can only act it out so well. Also, I'm recording this for posterity. Anyways, its heart rate seems to have gone down, so that's good, probably. Who knew xenobiology would be so hard, huh? <laughs> well, maybe it'll calm down enough to get some blood samples. Wait, my heart rate? How the hell can he tell that? He hasn't even put the wrist strap on yet. Is that just a canine thing? I know there are dogs that can do something like that. <sighs> it's impressive, a bit a little creepy. Second y'all, more coffee time. Oh, I got a long three days ahead of me. A <clears throat> long three days of work, but I'll get through it. And wait, did he say blood samples? Alright, anyways, I'm gonna put this on your wrist. Uh, you'll feel a bit of a squeeze, okay? <clears throat> He's repeating himself, as if talking to a child, as well as acting it out again. I suppose it's all he thinks he can do to communicate, so I just nod in response. He opens, his eyes open wide and he hikes up an eyebrow. Can you really not understand me? I asked, clung out my arm for him. Good for recording, that was the patient. Uh, at the time of recording, I'll assume that was an affirmative of some kind, and it has allowed me to take its blood pressure. Yeah, I'll take that as a no. I wonder if I'm better off with charades. I hate how that might actually be a good idea. Maybe later. I, I just want to get this impromptu appointment over with. After a short procedure, the wristband comes off. The patient calmly allowed to calmly allowed me to take their blood pressure. I will assume this is a ba just to be a baseline for future tests. If slightly elevated, perhaps. This would be a real this would be a really bad way to find out I have high blood pressure. Also, I suppose there's no other humans around, I wouldn't be able to tell anyways. I try to laugh it off. 
Well, I'm in my own head. Doc pulls out a stethoscope to that looks eerily similar to the one you could find on Earth. It turns back to me. Well, now I'll attempt to listen to and record the patient's heartbeat as best I can. If I can locate the heart. Assuming the patient has one. For note, uh, the patient always seems to have fur on their head. Uh, removing, the need to, uh, removing the need to move it out of the way. He edges, slowly, he edges slightly closer to me and slowly reaches his empty paw out. I promise I don't want to hurt you. I just want to make sure you are nice and healthy, all right? I almost laugh at his attempt to calm me down. It's sweet, but ultimately unnecessary. Although, I am feeling a bit calmer, oddly enough. I mean, I'm still trapped, but at least they sent, they sent this guy in to treat me instead of Merrick. That would be much more, uh, <clears throat> physical. Physical. At this rate, my heart rate might actually be decent for him. After shuffling forwards again, he makes eye contact with me, as if asking me not to jump back or lash out. I stay calm and let him continue with what he has to do. No need to prolong it. It does come to mind, however, that while I have made physical contact with these canines before, well, one made contact with me at ramming speed. I have not really had a chance to fully study them up close. I'm grateful to find out that they aren't all intimidating. Or maybe it's just Doc. He's a ma he's, ma he's massive, but so gentle. I can feel how warm he is, his breath on my arm, his fur brushing against my chest. It's certainly disarming, if nothing else. After leaning in and putting the cold stethoscope on my chest, he mumbles to himself, Attempting to ascertain the location of the patient's heart and take a reading. He fumbles about, he fumbles about for a bit, trying to find it, poking and prodding, but never quite getting it right. I'd be embarrassed for him if it wasn't so alien. I decided instead to just reach up and guide him with a free hand, grabbing the back of his mighty paw and gently delivering it to my heart. Oh! Thank you! Oh. <laughs> Ow. It only takes two beats of my heart for him to realize what just happened. He jolts backwards, falling off the bench. I flinch, worried something has happened. Merrick jumps up and rushes to the wall. What the hell, Doc? You okay? I'm coming in. No! Uh, no, I'm fine! Well, what the hell were all the theatrics for, then? I just realized what the Chief was implying! Oh dear, is this... Is this? Oh dear, this is... What are you on about? Merrick! It's following our conversations! Its movements and gestures are not random at all! It understands us! Merrick looks confused, as if he's uncertain that he wants to believe that could be true or not. That's a joke. Right, Doc? He doesn't respond. I'm just glad we might actually be making progress here. I was worried I would have to wait weeks to get anything, to get anything across. One second now. Coffee time. Guess I got found out by some damn smart dogs. Merrick excluded. Doc slowly gets up while eyeing me warily, as if I might attack at any, at any second, and musters the courage to ask, You can understand us, right? I simply nod. Both Doc and Merrick take a second to compose themselves. I guess that was quite the bombshell to casually drop. It's surprising me too, but so is everything here. I hope it wasn't a mistake letting them know I can understand them. Although, with how our earlier conversation was going, it seems the Chief might have figured me out already anyways. Maybe I can ask for a shirt soon. And, be, and to be let out of jail. Small steps. Doc blinks himself back to reality and sits down next to me. I don't think he knows what to say. Merrick! Uh, it should go without saying that everything that happens here is confidential, correct? What? Yeah, of course, Doc. I'm the one who interviewed half the people who saw this thing. We know the captain doesn't want the word out yet. Captain? Like military rank or like boat captain? Are we on a ship? I guess these questions will have to wait, but it seems there's some higher powers than just the chief. For posterity, and to make sure that wasn't just a coincidence, please not again if you can understand us. I'm a bit confused, but I guess it's not as confused as them. Yes, I understand you. Doc turns to Merrick, who looks equally as confused. Don't look at me. You're the scientist here. This is well beyond my purview. Well, do something. Hey, you know what my skill set includes, and this ain't it. These two really are li are these two really like going at each other. It's as if they were old married couple in some cheesy sitcom. A sitcom I'd watch back home. A hole suddenly forms in my gut. Home. Where the hell am I? Did I even get a chance to say goodbye? Oh man, not now. I'd really rather not cry in front of these two. Fortunately, the resident walking heart rate monitor seems to have picked up on this. Oh dear, uh, d don't worry, we aren't fighting. Uh, America and I just enjoy getting on each other's tails is all. Oh, this is so confusing. Um, I suppose I should introduce myself then. Uh, my name is Merowyn. Uh, Dr. Merowyn Seno. Uh, but most people just call me Merrow. Or Doc. Uh, mostly Doc. And that's Merrick Saris, our head of security, if you haven't picked up on that already. 
The saint really is trying to live up to his namesake, huh? He thought I was worried about their squabbling and tried to calm me down? Best doctor I've ever had, that's for sure. I take some deep breaths to compose myself. I point at myself. Who are you? Rius. Rius. Doc seems very excited and tries to repeat my name. I wonder what, if what I'm saying and what they're saying sounds different. Like, they obviously aren't speaking English, so why do I hear it like they are? And can they even repeat a word I've said in English back to me? <clears throat> would, would it have a funny accent, or would that just get translated, too? Wait. Is it being translated? This is too much to wrap my head around on an empty stomach. I look down and grab my stomach, only now realizing how hungry I am. I haven't eaten since last night. Who knows how long ago that was. I'm so disoriented, I don't even know what, my, what time it is. Focus. One issue at a time. And that time, that issue was lunch. I realize that Marilyn has just been watching me. Unfortunately, I think grabbing one's stomach seems to be universal language. Hey, Merrick, have we brought any food for our guest? Food? Uh, no, you were the first one in there since it woke up. What do you, su what do you suppose it eats anyways? Well, I guess we'll find out. <clears throat> Mind going and picking something up? A, a variety if you can. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to, Doc, but I ain't really supposed to leave it unguarded. Let alone leave you locked in there with it. I know you think it's fine and all, but it could still be dangerous. <laughs> Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!